And now we, I would like to invite David De Warranty, um, Gil Martin, the academic manager uh, of the English for Education system from British Council of Vietnam, who will tell us more about what is meant by digital innovation. He will set a context on moving the English teaching and learning online in response to the COVID and future impl implications. Uh, over to you, David De. Uh, good, thanks very much, uh, Vanang, and good morning to everyone in the UK and good afternoon to everyone here in Vietnam. Um, it's my great pleasure to be here today and to introduce the three projects that you've heard so much about from our guest speakers uh, in the earlier part of today's session. Um, before we do that, I would like to set a little bit, as Vanang said, a little bit of the scene in terms of the work we've been doing um, over the last few years here in Vietnam. Um, so Steve uh, Smith uh, mentioned before that the Digital Learning Innovation Fund is not just an interim measure, but part of a long term solution. And I really like that phrase because, again, it refers back to many of the interventions that we've done here over the years. And we have quite a track record in that. And I'd just like to share some of those with you uh, very briefly this afternoon, this morning, before introducing the three partnerships to say a little bit more about their um, about their projects. OK, so first of all, yeah, as I mentioned, we have quite a track record here. So the first thing or one of the first things we did in, co in conjunction with Moet and with um, the NFLP from 2008 to 2011 we created a virtual teacher support network which was uh, known as teaching English in Vietnam and this was part of the regional uh, access English program to provide uh, mapped facilities and mapped uh, activities for teachers from all levels from grade three all the way through to grade 12 to support them in the planning and teaching of their lessons. Then in 2013 we partnered with Nokia and Pearson on a project again to support teachers to use mobile devices in classrooms to help them with the planning and delivery of their teaching. Moving on to 2017 we again um, um, ensured that we had a consultancy for looking at to the global review of large scale innovation projects in ELT across the globe that could help NFLP in their ambitions and their strategic uh, direction for more large scale projects, including in the digital sphere and digital domain. Then that led to another consultancy in 2018, which was for a national open online learning centre. Um, and this evaluative report um, which was done by the British Council with the support of the Department for the UK's Department for International Trade has actually resulted in NFLP working with local uh, IT providers to develop an e-learning platform and that is live and ongoing at the moment and that leads us to where we are today with the, in 2021 with our launch of the Digital Learning uh, Innovation Fund. Uh, next slide please. Um, so the, as a number of speakers have mentioned, including uh, Vanang and Donna before. Um, in February 2020, uh, Vietnam had, was first affected uh, directly by COVID-19 uh, in terms of the closure of schools and universities, which continued for a number of months. And as a result of that, uh, school, as Dr. Hum mentioned before, uh, schools and universities and teachers and lecturers had to very quickly move from face-to-face -face teaching to emergency online teaching and remote teaching. And then the British Council globally in throughout 2020 in response to that created a digital task force and through that you're going to hear more about some of the work of the digital task force later on when we have our panel discussion. <clears throat> And then again, we mentioned uh, a number of people have mentioned the ELT, the virtual ELT mission that we uh, conducted here as a hybrid event between uh, representatives from the UK and from Vietnam back in September 2020. And it was at that um, uh, point that we announced the, uh, the uh, digital and launched the Digital Learning Innovation Fund in its current guise. And then from January of this year, we had an open call with two themes for um, people to um, submit their applications. One was on developing digital content, primarily for the e-learning platform that I just mentioned. And the second was to look at capacity building. And again, it was those two themes that have formed the basis of the, the projects that you're about to hear from in just a few moments. As a result of the open call and the briefing session that we held, we received nine proposals. And from the nine proposals, 
and through an, uh, an extensive evaluation process, we have selected the three projects. And those are the three projects I'm very, I'm very pleased <laughs> to finally introduce to you in just a few minutes. And um, before I introduce them, those two, those to you, I I'd just like to say, uh, Donna mentioned before that it's th this is a great uh, opportunity for Vietnam and for the UK to partner. But it's also worth noting and worth reiterating, as Donna mentioned, that the eyes of all, many of our East Asia colleagues are on Vietnam at the moment as we look at these three projects, these three uh, innovative projects over the next 12 months and to assess them, to monitor and evaluate them and see how they could be scaled up and made more sustainable, not just here in Vietnam, but perhaps possibly and hopefully in different parts of East Asia, if not around the globe in the years to come. So hopefully that's given you a very brief uh, set some of the scene and I'm going to hand over now to um, I'm going to hand over now to our first partnership, um, which is um, and our first presenter which is uh, Jonathan Dykes. And before I do that, can I just remind everybody, um, again, so Steve mentioned in his uh, speech earlier that later on you'll have a chance to quiz um, all three partnerships. So if you have any questions uh, about the partnerships or, or the projects or some of the um, initiatives as part of those innovations, please do share those in the Q&A chat and we'll try to field as many of those in the 10 minutes that we have at the end. OK, and with that, I'd like to hand over to uh, Jonathan, uh, who will say a little bit more about the Digital English Theatre project. Jonathan, over to you. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, David. <coughs> is, is someone going to put the PowerPoint on screen for us? Yes, it should be there now. Um, personally, I can't see it, but we'll be patient. It should, so, it should be, it should be there. Oh, there yeah, we, yeah. we can, we can, we, we can see it here. Okay, it's lovely. Thank you very much. Thanks. So yes, the Digital English Theatre Project. Well, uh, as you can see from this first slide, there are three partners in this project. International House Belfast, which is a specialist language school and teacher training centre based in Northern Ireland. Canto University, which is the largest university in the Mekong Delta region of Vietnam. And the Hands Up Project, which is a UK registered charity that provides language training to refugees or people in areas of conflict like Gaza, for example. Now, the Hands Up project was started by uh, a guy called Nick Bilborough, and he's the member of our team who's first demonstrated that drama, especially live drama, can be a powerful and motivating way of helping students of all ages and levels improve their language skills. Nick also demonstrated how recording and disseminating live performances using readily accessible digital technology motivates learners to do their best work. And then these recordings can also provide a very useful learning resource for students elsewhere. Next slide, please. So yeah, the main objectives of our project are to provide English language teachers with a range of new skills and techniques and to help students improve their level of English. And we aim to achieve this by providing teachers and learners with the skills they need to use drama effectively in their language classes. Next slide, please. There are three phases or stages to our project. The first of these, which is already underway, is to train groups of language teachers how to use digital English theatre methodology. The second phase is to help these same teachers then implement the methodology in their classes. And the third phase is to conduct some research in order to evaluate the impact of the project. Next slide, please. The initial training phase will involve 40 teachers. 30 of these are university teachers and 10 are from high schools or secondary schools. 
And this will give us the opportunity to see how teachers and students respond to the methodology in different types of institution. The second phase of the project will involve between uh, 800 and 1,000 students who will be encouraged to write, perform, record, and then disseminate their own short plays, which can be based on any theme the students choose. So we're also giving students the opportunity to be creative and to learn other useful skills such as enhanced digital literacy. Next slide, please. During the initial training phase, we'll also be training three university teachers, including colleagues from Kontao University, so that they will be able to organize more training courses for other English teachers in the future. Next slide, please. Kantor University will also be in charge of uh, conducting the research into the project's impact in phase three of the project. Some of the impact indicators will be quantitative and will include data on the number of teachers and students that engage with the project, the number of recordings they make and so on. But we also want to look at qualitative impact indicators, such as the improvement in learners' English skills and the motivation levels of both teachers and students. Now we know that the power of drama combined with the power of modern technology can have a real impact on learner outcomes. And we hope we can demonstrate this through the project. Next slide, please. Finally, our very sincere thanks to the British Council's team in Vietnam for selecting our project for funding. We certainly couldn't have dreamed of doing anything like this without this sort of financial support. So again, many thanks to everybody involved. And that's it. Thanks very much, Jonathan. Thanks for, for introducing the project and for your kind words about the British Council. We're really looking forward to working with you and your partners, Hands Up, the Hands Up Project and Kanto University over the next 12 months and seeing what successes you can have um, down in the Mekong Delta uh, region of, of Vietnam. Um, as I mentioned before, there will be an opportunity at the end, um, after all three presentations, to have an open Q&A uh, session with all three uh, projects. So if you have any questions, please uh, put them in the chat. That would be great. Thank you very much. Uh, now I'd like to hand over to the next, the second of our three projects in no particular order. And this time we're going to hear from um, IH London, I think. And I think, is it Ellie who's going to speak? It is. Hello. Thank you. Thank you very Hi, much. Hi. Good morning, Ellie. Thanks. Over to you. Good morning. Uh, thank you very much. And, and thank you to, to all the, the guests here. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Um, as, as David said, my name is Eleanor Malley and I am the Director of Education at International House London. I'm here with my colleagues Nyat Nguyen, Director of Faculty of English at Hanoi Pedagogical University 2 and Marie Willoughby, a teacher trainer at IH London. I'm really delighted to present our joint project, which is a virtual mentoring course for 60 teachers in rural Vietnam, which will be followed by an open access CPD course for teachers hosted on uh, HPU2's online platform and hopefully also NFLP's new online platform in the future. I'm going to give you a little bit of background about our partnership and then I'll then hand over to my colleagues to talk a little bit more about the project. Um, as was mentioned by uh, Sir Steve earlier, uh, IHL and HPU2 first met at the hybrid ELT seminar organised by the UK government, MOIT and NFLP. And since then, we had been discussing opportunities for cooperation and collaboration. And when this Digital Innovation Fund was announced, it seemed to be the perfect opportunity for IHL to partner with HPU2 and work on a project together. Uh, next slide, please. You can skip, skip to the next one again. It was clear that our organisational missions are very similar. We both believe in the positive impact of teacher development and student learning, and we both have skills and experience in this area. 
HPU2 is passionate about providing teacher development opportunities and raising student attainment across Vietnam, and IH London has vast experience in teacher training, online delivery and teacher development. We are really excited about combining these skills to create something really special and impactful. Over to you, Nyat. Hello everyone, yes, and uh, in this, we got in touch with IH London to explore the opportunities for partnerships and we all agree that focusing on uh, professional development for teachers through an online mentoring scheme would be the best way uh, to use IH London's and HPU2 skills, experience and passion. Uh, we also believe that this could be a sustainable program that would create a um, positive long lasting change. And over to you, Mary. Thank you. Um, OK, next slide, please. OK, wonderful. So I'm going to talk about the project and the outcomes. Um, so in collaboration with Nyat and her trainers, we identified needs and challenges related to using the course books which are available to teachers this year, including the new Tiangang books which implement the 2018 curriculum. We identified the needs to upskill teachers in the use and adaptation of the new materials and course books and ensure that teachers are using the materials effectively to maximise communicative skills in the classroom. So to address these challenges, we are developing an eight week virtual mentoring course for 60 teachers in rural Vietnam, um, followed by further mentoring during the first teaching term. We selected grade six teachers as the initial focus as they have the job of helping learners transition from primary to secondary school, where more is expected of students. The participants will be analysing, adapting and developing their own materials for a range of lessons using their new course books. They will then go on to use these materials, video their classes and reflect on them. From all of this, we will put together a 30 hour asynchronous materials development course open to all teachers throughout Vietnam. Next slide, please. Thanks. So the mentoring course will enable these teachers to feel more confident when using and developing materials, be more aware of key principles behind local materials development, and this is expected to have positive impacts on student learning, particularly with regard to developing communicative skills. As teachers experiment with the materials they and their peers have created, they will continue their active engagement with professional development beyond the course and disseminate materials, ideas and best practice to other teachers in the field. And it's back to you, Nya. Okay, yes, please, next, next slide, please. Yep, all right, so uh, we wanted to ensure the project were sustainable and have long lasting impact beyond the mentoring. Uh, that's why we will also create an open access digital teacher development course at one of the outputs of this project. We will use the videos and materials collected from the mentoring project to design it. Um, this work will be uploaded to HBU2's platform and linked to the e-learning platform of NFLP for all the teachers to freely access. The course itself will be asynchronous and maintain the long-term sustainability of the course. We will assign a team to support the registrations and the uh, operation. Moreover, we will promote the course to English communities in Vietnam, such as Vietnamese, Vietnamese K Travel Group. By doing it, uh, the course can be extended to teachers at different education, educational levels, such as primary or high schools. Last but not least, the project offers uh, an opportunity to do further research on the current challenges of English language teaching in Vietnam, deep insights into the teachers' practices with the Vietnamese new curriculum will be an important contribution of this project. Thank you. 
Uh, thank you, Nyat, and thank you, Ellie and Marie, also, um, for your uh, joint presentation there. Excellent, seamless. <laughs> and um, again, really interesting to hear a few more details about your project, um, the, the rationale behind the project, and also thinking to the future about how the open access course, that might be interesting to hear a little bit more about that in a, in a few minutes, and also how you want to tie up with Viet CSOL and the NFLP's e-learning platform that we mentioned earlier in my, my brief introduction. OK, thanks very much. Uh, now let's move on to the third and, and final uh, presentation. And this, for this, I'll hand over to my colleague, my colleagues Twee and Marina. Okay, Tui, are you Thank here? Thank you. Yes. Start. All right. Yes. Uh, yeah, so I would like to start. So, this is uh, guest, delegates, educators, and teachers. Uh, good morning and good afternoon. My name is Tui. I am uh, a co -pro um, project lead, uh, language policy researcher, and scholar. And I am also a deputy head of the external affairs office at Tano University of Sun and Technology. And uh, my colleague, Marina. Yes, uh, Marina Orsini Jones. I've been leading the Masters in English Language Teaching and Applied Linguistics for a long time at Coventry. Um, uh, I've been in e learning since, or well, I don't want to say 30 years, and I'm very honoured to be with you today and very thankful to the British Council on the National uh, Foreign Language Policy. Uh, in, and I would like to ask to change the next slide, please. Thank you. Um, something we wanted to point out is our logo. We want to show you that we want to do a virtual exchange where teachers from the UK and students in teacher education from the UK and teachers in Vietnam and students in teacher education from uh, Vietnam will talk to each other and we, we thought the two E's represented that. So there is a dialogic dimension to this project. Uh, we are both uh, institutions which have led on teacher innovation for many years. We both have a digital innovation lab and two, we can tell you more about our collaboration. OK, so we have been working collaboratively with Coventry for a few projects and especially we have a recent project on ACES, which we promote uh, playfulness uh, pedagogies towards uh, an inclusive, safe and resilient society. And we're very happy to work on this uh, project together. Next slide, please. To it. Yes, next slide, next slide, please. Yeah, this is it to it. Oh, it was there. Sorry, go back one. Sorry, apologies. Couldn't you see this? Oh, yeah. OK, yes. So for the aim of pro the project, the first we would like. Sorry, can you go back to the aim? Yeah. All right, so the, the first aim of our project is we would like to use collaborative online international model to offer a bottom up and inclusive teacher professional development. And we also aim to create a first time ever UK and Vietnam teachers to interact together as a sustainable community of ELT practice. Marina? Yes, and this virtual exchange uh, will include this sharing our good practice together and develop those uh, uh, commun well, common European framework, new uh, competencies and skills, including interactional online skills for the COVID time and also post COVID and the intercultural skills, which were missing from the pre previous common European framework. And we'd like to explore uh, more developments of communicative competence while developing digital competencies, while developing interactional competencies and create accessible learning objects. Uh, and the aims reflect very much our research questions. Next slide, please. So our team in Vietnam, beside me as a colleague, we invited um, experienced ELT trainers and we also have uh, innovative IT experts to work with us on this project. And from the UK side, we have many ELT experts, including CELTA, DELTA trainers, and, uh, and we, I'm proud, proud to say that also a current student of mine, Farida, is both in the Migrant Refugee Centre, but also a student, and Min Tuan T is uh, uh, an alumnus from Coventry, a main ELT. So nice mixed team and nice five and five from each country. Next slide, please. 
We're also very happy to have uh, these collaborating institutions uh, to widen participation, to reach also in the UK, reach out to people who don't always get opportunities for free training in ELT. We have uh, the Refugee and Migrant Centre on board with seven teachers involved from there and Farid, of course. Um, and we also have uh, the University of Southampton with Kate Borswick as a consultant. And I mean, I can't say much about Southampton, apart from Tim Berners-Lee, who invented the internet, is from Southampton, so definitely good pedigree there. Next slide, please. Yes, do we? So in order to make the uh, project more impactful, um, you can see that we invited partners from remote mountainous areas to big cities in Vietnam. And you can see the institution here. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank the institution to work with us on this project. Next, please. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. I is there. Can you see? Okay. Yeah. Um, so what we will do for our project, the first thing we would like to do is we will offer two cycles to create knowledge sharing of good practice uh, practices through open models. And you can see that we have uh, 120 participants. They not only ELT train teachers, but also we recruit students in education in order to help have a for them to to get into training and have, have a more pedagogical skills when they start working in the future. And we put together topics. We're running out of time now, so you can probably look at the topics which are negotiable as yeah. well. But no, we are hoping to that, that's, that's forming the panel discussion. We are hoping to include escape routes and new innovative ways of doing speaking uh, practice. And we hope to create and disseminate videos disseminating good uh, practice like escape room and augmented reality and other things which have been done but not shared as much as we, we would like them to. Next, please. OK, I think I won't dwell too much on these research questions, but just so people to know we will follow an actual research uh, model. So we will do the first cycle in June and collect uh, data and then review uh, for the next cycle in October, November. We will evaluate what happens in a mix of qualitative and quantitative collected via online surveys and other tools. And we will work together with the teachers and the students in teacher education to think uh, how to set up the next cycle of the project and these questions mirror very much the aims as well next please so for monitoring and evaluation uh, actually the first we have been working very hard uh, to provide action points and we uh, regulate uh, the action points uh, very closely every week we also have a steering committee to monitor uh, the milestone and key performance of the project and uh, we would like to say that all the recruitment and research um, that we carried uh, has been uh, uh, gone through the ethics approvals by Coventry University. And finally, we will create interim and final reports um, that meets the requirement of the um, funding agencies and also our associated partners. Next slide, please. This is a concluding slide. Uh, I will actually just as an example of what ah, we're okay. going to use for analytics. Yes. And I've can got, we go to the next slide, please? I've got a couple on. I've got a couple Sorry, on here. So. David, you are on sound. We, you, we can hear you. Can we have the next slide, please? Thank you. Okay. Yes. Um, so there are many benefits to participate in our project. The first um, trainers uh, or participants will be receiving certificates um, that provided by the institution. And the second is we think that this is the first time ever that we create a chat national community of practice where UK and teachers um, in Vietnam can interact and learn from each other. And the third one, we believe in the mission of train the trainers where we hope that the participants in our project will become key trainers so that they uh, will spread the good practices to other people in the future. Marina? Yes, I just want to add to this slide as well that we I'm a trained uni collaboration trainer, which also means students will get badges from uni collaboration, the European Virtual Exchange Association on completion. We forgot to add that benefit. Um, but the idea is also to scale up if possible. And I'm thinking uh, poss possibly a bit 
a big scale, the idea of micro credentials, which we can award to the participants going forward, um, M level micro credential, which can be delivered through the course and on completion, we, the participants can gain accreditation for MA level courses, which can feed into the universities involved uh, program in the programs in the participating universities. So and of course there will be dissemination of materials and I hope the other members of this uh, fantastic new initiative can help us build on our links and resources on the website and creation of a new pedagogical model, which includes in a holistic way, uh, interactive, um, effective online skills, digital literacies, speaking skills, and all the um, issues identified in the National Foreign Language Pro Project in Vietnam we need to address. Thank you very much. And can you just on the go to the last slide? And I just want to thank everybody at the British Council and the National Language Policy for the help, the support, and for selecting us. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much, Twee. Thanks very much, Marina, for that presentation and introduction to your project. Again, really interesting to hear about the collaboration between uh, Coventry University and HOOST and also to learn perhaps a little bit more later if we have a chance, if we have time, about the, the cross-sector uh, community of practice between U teachers both in, in the UK and Vietnam and how the teachers in the UK can support teachers in Vietnam. Maybe we'll have time to discuss that uh, in just a few minutes. Um, OK, so we have about maybe five minutes. We're just running a about four or five minutes behind schedule, which is fine. Um, so I'll just maybe have five minutes for a number of questions. Um, I'd like to turn first to, if it's okay, to um, Marie from um, IHL. Um, again, you mentioned about the focus on grade six teachers. And I wonder if you could say a little bit about why, or expand a little bit to say a bit more about why you selected that uh, um, target a group of teachers and also some of the challenges that teachers may have. One question that's come in is about some of the challenges teachers may have first of all in um, choosing textbooks because again there'll be different textbooks that different schools and different districts may choose um, mm -hmm. as a result of recent uh, MOET and um, uh, decisions about the availability of course books and also how are you going to tailor um, how are you going to measure, sorry, whether the teachers can effectively use their books? So kind of two parts, two part question in one. Two Over part to you, Marie. OK, so um, let's see. So first of all, in terms of measuring how uh, effective course book use is and how effective, um, therefore, the, the mentoring process is, what we're really looking at is a few really key principles in materials design. So um, looking at what the teachers on the mentoring course are designing, how they're developing and um, their own lesson plans, their lesson videos and their reflections. So we'll have quite a lot of data that we can look at. Um, I do have my camera on. Um, OK, and um, so uh, yes, the other question is the course books. So what we'll be looking at is if we have general principles based on the most commonly used course book, the teachers will then go and create the materials using the course book that their school has designed. So it's the, the principles which can be applied to any course book, hopefully at any level. Uh, in okay. Yeah. Thanks, Marie. And again, you made reference as well to the to the 2018, the, 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 the new 2018 English language curriculum from NFLP. So I think, as you say, it's good if you can make reference to that as yeah. well, in term, as well as the key principles that you've agreed with um, IH London have agreed with HBU2 as part of your project. Um, can I move uh, to um, to Jonathan or to the IH Belfast and Kunto University team um, and ask a question again uh, related to the the application of digital English to um, language improvement. And maybe you could expand a little bit on that, maybe with particular reference to um, your experiences or hands up, the Hands Up Project's experience in Palestine. Jonathan? Sure. Um, unfortunately, Nick Bilborough, who is the, uh, so say the uh, guy who put the Hands Up Project together, isn't able to join us today because, in fact, he's doing a teacher training uh, session as we speak. And I think today was the last session of this particular group 
um, and they were all very excited about being able to perform their plays online at this very moment. So unfortunately, he's not here, he's the expert. But what he has demonstrated, I think, very effectively is that it's it is um, a way of really uh, motivating and um, inspiring students to use their, their English language skills. And in a sense, it's a bit like uh, it's an extension of a familiar methodology, um, which I'm sure everyone's familiar with, which is called total physical response. And the underlying idea here is that instead of students just sitting at their desks listening to somebody or just taking notes, if you can actually get them out of their seats and, and performing using their whole body, for example, to enact uh, a dialogue or some sort of interaction in English, it becomes a much more memorable experience and it certainly enhances learning. In other words, the more of the body you use, the more likely it is that students will uh, achieve their learner outcomes. And I think this has been demonstrated um, traditionally in our, in our industry for a long time now. Um, and it's something that we have also demonstrated with students of all ages and all levels. So we're hoping we can also do that with our Vietnamese students. Thanks, Jonathan. And it's great to hear that the, your project has already started and the training has already started in in Kunta. Um, so it'd be, again, great to hear some of the feedback from the from the participants and how they're hoping to apply what they've learned. Um, time is pre pressing on. Again, if we have any more questions, we'll try to feed them in. I've got one question I'd like to ask to the the, the Vivexel team from Coventry and Hughes before we move on to our panel, uh, and that is about the cross sector community of practice between teachers in the UK and, and Vietnam. So Thuy or Marina, would you like to just expand a little bit perhaps on that and, and the thought and the thinking process behind that? At least the idea that um, we have experienced this before with uh, collaborative online international learning and virtual exchange to get on board. People who are experts, but people are novice and people who are training to become teachers. And the idea is that we get uh, cross sessional. So we have the migrant refugee center. We will have secondary schools. We will have university teachers. So we'll have uh, a lot of different experienced teachers and also novice teachers and training teachers feeding into the discussion and we hope this will generate a novel way of approaching a discussion on ELT um, supported by online dialogue and the idea is that they are doing it in action while doing it and then they will reflect in a reflective portfolio on action and then hopefully think about the future practice. Uh, an area we're particularly interested in, I think you touched on it, some people touched on it at the beginning of today, is how it is more difficult to get people to interact online in comparison mm. to interacting face to face. And we are experiencing it. We have students who don't switch on the cameras. We have uh, the difficulty of the time lag. And I'm very impressed by Jonathan, who is actually doing two immersive theatre. And I'm really, I like to be there and learn as well. Uh, so we really like to explore that and provide tips. Uh, to people and possibly in innovative, innovative ways, how you can do it online. So virtual rooms, virtual escape rooms exist face to face. Uh, can it be done online with tips on how to find things and develop vocabulary in English, for example? And we like to hear ideas because we think all these tutors, particularly in Vietnam, you've done so much work already. We really want to have a knowledge sharing. We have already found that in some respects we have a lot to learn in the UK, uh, particularly from hosts who are really uh, at the edge of a new gamification. So it's going to be, I think, interesting to see how that works. I don't know if this answers your question, David. No, that's that's great, Marina. Thank you very much. And it's interesting to hear as well about the, I like what you, the reference you just made there to the cross fertilization between the UK and the Vietnam institutions and your practice and experience as well. And, and that can be a, a, a two way collaboration. And again, I think that's that's really sort of emblematic of all three projects and the partnerships that you've created over the last few months and what you set out to do over the next few months going for, going forward as well. Um, I'm going to bring this Q&A to a close, if that's OK, just be keeping my eye on the time. Uh, so we can move into to the third and final phase of our panel discussion. But I just want to say, first of all, thank you very much to all three projects and partnerships 
um, for your presentations and for, for your responses to the questions. Uh, as Marina said, hopefully we can continue this dialogue in the months to follow um, and we'll, we'll certainly try to explore opportunities to be able to do that.